Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Now I'm going to get into my real issue with the interview. You have a person on the show that is giving relationship advice and or critique that has failed as a father. He has children that are that have claimed that they are not being supported by this person and have not seen them. That has an ex or a baby's mother, whatever you want to call the person, the woman, that is claimed that he's not taking an active role in the kid's life and has not been around and was not necessarily a great person to her while he was with her. I ain't gonna never roll with nobody on relationship advice if you ain't been successful in a relationship. If your relationship history reads as stripper, baby mama, baby mama, you're not with none of the baby mamas and you don't have a relationship with the baby mama or the kids. Something wrong with you as a man. I'd be damned if you about to sit there and lecture anybody that may be successful in that realm on that. That's my first just getting that off. And I know from what I know of the public persona of Joe Budden, he is a person that may not be the best with the baby mama but he does seem to have a relationship with his children that's important for a black man if we want to talk about the upliftment and 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 bringing our people to a better place we got to talk about the importance of black fathers being in their children's lives on a day-to-day basis and making that a, a a purpose for them like you have to have a purpose of being in your child's life that's just bare minimum regardless of how you feel about the baby mama, regardless of whatever scandal went, like that's what any black parent that I know, that's the base that they stand on. Everything else is kind of subsidiary, but that that's their foundation of like, I'm going to be there for my baby. So when I got a black man that is not there for his black babies and he's given relationship and parenting advice and all of this about how to navigate that world, I have to, call you to task and question that and nobody questioned him on that my second issue and y'all know where i'm going with this one (laughs) we have a man that has collected money since 2014 at the earliest documented we don't know what happened in meetings that were you know held that weren't recorded But the earliest recording that I know of that was recorded was in 2014 for St. Paul's College saying that this man was going to open a school next year. Every single year we have been through since that year, this man has said the school is opening next year. Last year, when he held his block party where he mock married two black women, I ain't going to even go there on that. Mm He said the school was open in this year, in 2023, let me, last let me, year, in 2023. Let me, let me, nothing happened. Let me interrupt you real quick. Mock marriage. Wow. Mock marriage. Because he wasn't really getting married. It was a uh, it was a ceremony without any substantiation, without any religious backing, without any government backing. It was just, I'm walking down the aisle with these two people and I'm acting like I'm with them. So what that says to me is that you really just out here philandering and trying to get with women off of the clout of whatever platform you have. That's what that says to me. I can be wrong. I'm not saying I'm 100% correct on that, but it doesn't look like you're really serious about marrying anybody because you're still talking about when I marry, if I marry. So that tells me that that was a mock marriage. But that's neither here nor there. My point is, you told us then the school was opening in 2024. That has now been pushed back to 2025. This is now the 10th year that the year of your school opening has been pushed back again. But you're still collecting funds, money, and resources for said school. But all we see you doing is doing interview tours, 
and going around doing speaking engagements and putting out a book that if you want to be honest, I've seen the book now. Mm -hmm. The book is not a book as in a scholarly journal of original ideas that have been peer reviewed and back. It is a book that has not been peer reviewed and back. And it is a book that is basically made up. It's basically the same shit that, um, what's the dude? Dr. Malachi Z. York used to do. He used to put out a bunch of other people's kind of information, compile it into a book and, and put it off as his own. Oh, so he, um, very good at the shit. Indeed. And the problem with it is half of the shit that's actually factual in your book, you go against in your life. See, I've been one of them people that was following the live streams. I watch him on Instagram when he go live. I watch him on, on, on TikTok and Facebook when he drops his little clips. I watch him on YouTube when he drops his, his video. Like, I see what's... You're not standing on that. You're saying weird shit like mental health can come from a tree. We ain't gonna act like we don't remember this shit. This shit is archived in our own videos when we covered the shit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You out here fighting with seagulls at the beach when you should be at the school building this school so it can open when it's supposed to open. You the same man yeah. that said your school is going to open without any white funding yet you or without any white backing yet you ended up going to a white HVAC when there were black HVAC people that were hitting you up in the in inception of the new school that you built. Or that you bought. I won't even say you built because you ain't built shit. The school's already there. Uh -huh. But you, can, you, these people were hitting you up and saying, I will do the work for free. I just need you to co-sign it and tell me what time and day I need to be there. And you turned them down. I can't keep running with somebody that, like, what I'm not going to do is keep allowing somebody... I, I gave it a year, y'all. I gave him a year off. I did. I won't even go talk about it on this podcast. But my brother put it on the on the docket, so damn it, we here now. Yeah. What you're not going to do is keep talking about the school opening while you're collecting funds from black people, many of which are too ignorant, less knowledgeable than you, and they just don't know no better. So they're going to donate because of the feeling that you invoke. This is the same as a preacher that's asking you to donate to a church for a building fund and the building never gets built. This is that's all this is. It's the same scam that's been run for hundreds of years. You just remixed it and turned it into a school. It's the same shit, though. And I'm not going to watch you go on a podcast where these people don't challenge you on these things, where, where you're standing on these very strong ledges but have no in real life backing. I'm a real black dad. What you ain't about to do is lecture me on anybody I date or anything that I do with my parenting if you ain't doing it better than me. And my son see me every day, no matter what sacrifices I got to make. What you ain't about to do is lecture me on educating black people when I've educated thousands of black lives that are now hitting me up from colleges, their own businesses and other successful endeavors where they're adults now and they're letting me know, hey, you did that shit. You helped me. I'm not about to keep letting this shit ride. Like I, I'm at a point where I'm comfortable in my own skin. I'm very comfortable with letting people know you're fucked up. And he's fucked up. We can keep putting him on podcasts to be entertaining. That's fine. If you just want some clicks and views and some laughs, cool. But what I'm not about to do is allow you to keep saying shit just because you read a few history books as if your word is golden. Put you up against a Mar Michael Eric Dyson. Put you up against a yeah, uh, 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 what's my boy name with the beard? Oh, damn. His name is slipping me right now. Put Hell you up against a minister Farrakhan. Uh, we can go near the grass Tyson. That's fine. But I'm even talking about somebody like a uh, what's the man name? He got the he got the beard. He always wear the suit and look a little disheveled. But he he got the the weird bushy fro. Cornell West. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. Put you up against somebody that can actually refute the history that you're even speak, speaking. And then see where this conversation goes. Because what I'm not seeing is the act. You keep talking about being pro-Pan-African, but I'm not seeing the works. I'm seeing you taking trips. I've seen you do baths. I've seen you talk about women and how you want to have them, uh, how you want to have them rub, what, hot peanut butter on you or some weird shit. Like, I've seen all this weird shit from you. But I, I ain't seen that. you yeah. actually do something substantial to push the black movement forward. I haven't seen you teach a black child. Yet Q Butter, one of your detractors, you argue with him, but I've seen him at least showing evidence of him teaching black children. Whether he's a great teacher or bad teacher or whatever, he's at least putting in the work to do it. And he's opened up a school in less time than you did, with less resources than you have. And these kids seem to be very proficient in math and science which seems to be the way the world is going. So it seems like he's setting our black kids up for a much better future than anything I've seen you actually do. What I'm not going to keep going into 2024 with is we listening to people's rhetoric without seeing the works that they've produced that back the rhetoric. I need evidence, sir. Yeah. 